But we need to also handle problems, handle uh, situations, how to solve problems. And then when we do that, then we can say the words of the law gently. The words of the law means it's something that needs to be done. Okay, so there are four areas here, exploring and guiding. Exploring means there's something we don't know how to do it. Let's find out how. Let's do br some brainstorming. That means just think about how we can solve this problem. Okay, the children, they're not, they don't have motivation to study well. How can we uh, help him to have stronger motivation? That's exploring. Guiding is when we know the way to solve it and then we guide the person to understand that. For instance, I suggest to the wives that you can say to the husband, you know, when you listen to me, when you pay attention to me when I talk, I, I'll be very, very happy. And the husband will say, yes, you are precious to me, I'm willing to listen to you. Now, the problem with many people is they just don't appreciate each other. They just look at the shortcomings of each person. Now, each person, if I use the right hand as the good things, and then the, the left hand as the things that, uh, that he or she is not doing so well, now very often people don't pay attention to the good things. They will say, well, these are things that he or she should be doing. These are her responsibilities, so she should be doing this. And then they just look at the things that she's not doing well, and then just say, wow, you didn't do this well. So, like, uh, you know, she cooks the food and then uh, the husband just said, uh, well, the food is too salty. Instead of saying, you know, you, you put so much effort into it, uh, into cooking, I really appreciate that you cook so well. And uh, I would suggest that for this dish, you know, it can be a little less salty. So, so we can guide them to find a way to, uh, uh, to solve the problem. So here, I put down here, how can we solve this problem? If the child is not studying well, so how can we solve this problem? Now, I suggest this. If the child doesn't have motivation to study, then we can say, you know, we can say to the child all the time and study the Bible and pray together and say, you are precious, you know, you are a precious child and God has a wonderful plan in your life and you become a great person. And, uh, and do you believe that? Do you want to be a great person? And then we can say, uh, well, in order to be a great person, do you think you need to study? You know, do you think studying would help? Now, sometimes we don't want to tackle all the problems together. You know, study hard. We don't have to talk about, well, playing, don't play the games so much. So tackle one problem at one time. So do you want to put more effort into studying? So if he's willing, that is good. And then next time we can talk about the, uh, the playing of the games, you know, if it's affecting his study, if it's using too much of his time. Now, if he has good control, uh, I think it's okay for him to play games. Now, of course, for me, I don't play games at all because I'm mature. I have strong motivation to make the best of my life. But not every child is like that. So if he's willing to do well, uh, study well, study hard, and then uh, he can manage his time that he doesn't put too much effort into playing the games, then we can appreciate him that he's, he's doing well and say you are, have great potential and God will use you greatly. So I hope you will all believe that. Think about the family members. Believe that every family member are important, are precious. Everyone is important in the kingdom of God. God has a wonderful plan in each person. And then if we build up one another, encourage each other, we all can grow together and then we become pleasing to the Lord and the Lord will be very happy with us and He will bless us. So, can you think of each person in your family and say, I really appreciate that person. I really think he's a great person. He has the potential to become a great person. If he has some shortcomings, there are ways to overcome that. And then we can guide the person. Guide the person how to grow instead of criticizing him. Criticism will only produce the opposite effect. Criticism will make the other person feel disappointed, 
will feel uh, rejected, uh, despised. But if we appreciate him, it will make him feel important. He feel good, and have more motivation. Okay. So and then here, uh, do you think our relationship can improve? So do you think we can improve? And do you want to have better communication with me? So these are ways to guide the other person to have the motivation to to communicate better and to uh, to imp uh, help the relationship to improve. So we can say things like that to the spouse uh, when we want to find ways to improve. So so when you go home, please say nice things to your husband and wife. Now. I want to say this. First, say the good things before you give the suggestions. First, you know, I hope you all go home and will start to do this to your spouse and say, count all the good things he or she has done. You have done this, you have uh, cleaned the house well, you have cooked well, you have taken good care of me, and I really appreciate you. You are a good wife, and, and uh, it's, it's super nice to have you as my wife. And, so appreciate the things that she has done well. And then, and then you can talk about, well, do you want to build up the relationship? Instead of, instead of just telling, asking her how to improve, that we can say, um, I would like to build up the relationship uh, in the family. Uh, would you like to do that? So uh, verbalize our desire to work on the uh, to uh, work, do things to improve the relationship. Instead of just telling, okay, if you don't yell at me, it will be better. Now that that is harder to uh, to take. So whatever we say, we think, does it make the other person feel rejected or despised? Uh, when we say things like that, that, if we just say, well, if you don't yell so much, it will be uh, we'll be happier. But we can say, I, you know, I, I think of the things I've done wrong. Please forgive me that I have not paid much attention to relationship. I'm sorry. Uh, and then I have the desire to, uh, to, build on the, to build up the relationship in the family, to build up our communication. Uh, do you like to do the same also? And if I have anything that I need to improve, please tell me. Now, because many people have a sense, you know, a, a lack of a sense of security. Because most people grew up with a lot of criticism. They receive a lot of criticism. So we are afraid to be criticized again. So we are afraid to say, you know, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. We're afraid to say that. Because we might fear that the other person will start attacking us and criticizing us. So we are not willing to admit our faults. So I hope we all are willing to admit our faults. When we admit our faults, it will make the other person more willing to work on the relationship. Okay, so, so how to say words of the Lord gently exploring and guiding the other person. And then sometimes we need to teach, but when we teach, Use questions also. It's better to use more questions. Isn't it better we can talk positively? Can we appreciate each other? Uh, is it okay that we put down the cell phone when we talk? That um, now, in a way, you know, it's it's a question, but it's also a suggestion. That is a teaching. That if we put down a cell phone and talk, it will be better. And then requesting. Instead of commanding, but many people command and say, take the garbage out and do this, to clean up the house. Instead of say that, you know, commanding, we can say, well, would you help me wash the dishes? I really appreciate that you would help me. Uh, I, I, I need your help. I would be very happy that you help me. And then rebuking. Now, sometimes we need to tell the other person what he has done wrong. Uh, but we say in a gentle way, but we try all the other methods first before we go to rebuking. So uh, when you talk like that, uh, just when a person just said something and then you say, well, when you said that, how do you think 
the people would feel? How do you think I would feel? Now, we try to avoid rebuking because it's hard to take rebuking. So we try to use exploring and guiding and uh, sometimes teaching and requesting. Uh, the best is to explore and guide. Okay, so I hope you understand this. If you don't understand this, please uh, send the questions to me. The main thing is that instead of commanding and criticizing the other person, commanding and saying, you, have, you take the garbage out, you clean up the house, you know, we can say, well, it's better to say, let's clean the house together. I, I need your help. And I really appreciate that you would do it. That's requesting. Uh, so it's better to use words that make, think about, think about what, how we'll say things to make the other person feel uh, comfortable. So that takes effort. So before we say anything, we should think. And some people say, well, that's too hard. If, yeah, if I have to think every time I talk, that's difficult. Well, at the beginning, it takes effort. But after a while, you get used to it. After a while, you get used to appreciating your spouse and saying nice things and saying you are great, you are doing well and I found your strength, you are wise, you know. After a while, it becomes very easy for you to do that, to, uh, that you, you already get used to it. And some people say, well, that is not real. Then, you'll, then I'll ask you, so what is really in your heart? Is it, do you have love or do you have criticism? Do you have criticism? Jesus said, you know, if you criticize, other people, then you also be criticized. You judge people, then you'll be judged. Okay, now, we can motivate other people to change by God's grace and also by the grace of a person, okay? So th this is here, first, God's grace. God is happy whenever we love each other. And then if it's people's uh, grace, then we can say, when we love each other, we'll be happier. And uh, then we can enjoy the relationship more. And then two, God always listen to our prayers. And then, uh, and then we can say, if it's motivation from person, we'll say, when we pray together, I feel happy that, that we can pray together, that we can be united in our prayer. And then three here, so we can pray together with confidence, that, that we can pray with confidence to God. And, uh, and then with, for, for person's motivation, we can say, well, I enjoy praying with you. And, and I believe that when we pray together, it will also, you know, first, uh, God will give us strength. Secondly, uh, our relationship will also improve. Four, God knows your needs before you pray. So that's when we encourage one another. And then we can say, yeah, I know your needs and I care about you and I, I, I ask God to help you and bless you. Five, when we love each other and love God, He will raise us to a high level. So that's using God's grace to motivate. When we love one another and love God, then God will raise us to a high level. And then the human motivation will be like this, that when we love each other, that we both will enjoy the relationship, will enjoy life more. And six, when we resolve our problems gently, God is very happy and will reward us richly. So, uh, so when we resolve the problem and communicate better, then God is very happy and will reward us richly. And then the human uh, motivation would be like, uh, if we resolve our problems, we both will enjoy the relationship and then we can both talk with one another in a very relaxed way and the atmosphere in the family is relaxed. Now, I want to say something. I went to restaurants and I noticed that there are children that I noticed the difference between some children. Some children, when they go to a restaurant with the parents, they, they're very happy and, and they're very free. They might sit on the lap of the parents. They might uh, uh, hug the parents and they might put the arm, the arm on the neck of the parents. Uh, they might go to the side of the parent. They do things like that. And I, then I know that the relationship of the family is good. And there are families that I notice that the children just sit there rigidly. They don't say anything. They just sit there and eat and they don't participate much. 
then you can see that that there was not much freedom in the family. Also, I've noticed that uh, that sometimes a uh, one time I remember clearly a mother brought a son to eat in a restaurant, and for the whole process, the mother was looking at her cell phone. The child was looking at his. Uh, 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 not the phone, but the uh, uh, tablet. Okay, and uh, the whole process they hardly talk. So they, when they were eating, they were just eating themselves and looking at the cell phone or the tablet. So that's the culture in the family. So the relationship is weak. When we are together with our family members or with church members, or with anyone, it's a good habit that we say things to them, relate to them, ask them questions to build up the relationship, care about them. Uh, sometimes we have to find things to say, you know, find things that we can care about the other person. But this is worth the effort because then we'll build up the relationship. So it's very important that we build up the relationship of the family because the Bible says that love your wife as Christ loves the church that's what the Bible tells us to do when we love one another then God is happy that God wants us to love one another okay and then number seven we have ground for improvement when we love each other and love God so we can improve more when we love one another and then we'll enjoy our relationship uh, better Okay, and then spouse, guide spouse and children to change with God's grace. So we guide them to change. Number one, I, I like to have a better relationship with you. So that's saying I would like, and then we can say, would you like to have a better relationship? Uh, would you like to build up a better relationship in a family? And two, do you think we can have a better relationship? So this is asking a question. Imagine how it would be when we have a better relationship. So when we have a better relationship, how would the family be? So that's asking the person to imagine, to think. Four, how can we have a better relationship? So how can we, how can we do it better? So what can we do? Five, I like it very much when you help me. So when you help me, I'm very happy. I'm happy, I'm happy that you're doing those things. I'm very happy. So. So this will in, encourage a person to, to grow, to, uh, to work on the relationship. So don't remind people of their bad behavior. Don't accuse them in order to change them. Give them positive reinforcement. So give them positive suggestion and say, well, uh, you're a precious person and your life is precious and uh, do you want to improve? Uh, do you want to do well, better in the, your schoolwork? And it will help you greatly. You know, for me, sometimes I encourage people to study by saying, you know, I did study well. I study my English well, I study uh, my language, and uh, also in the seminary, I also learn logic and learn preaching. And I, I study this well so that I can be uh, helping people and, and serving God efficiently. So do you want to uh, work on your, you know, stu uh, study well so that you know, improve, uh, work on your uh, skill of language, work on your skill of sharing, uh, work on your skill of communicating with people, then your whole life will improve. Do you want to do that? So that is a better way than saying, well, you don't talk to people, you don't listen to people. That is criticism. Criticism doesn't produce much good. So try not to remind them of their shortcomings. Now, sometimes we need to. But try to strengthen the good points. Uh, now, when the person is just watching, you know, playing with the cell phone, then we can say, well, uh, when you, uh, you know, if you study well, you work hard, and then you'll be very happy. Uh, you'll be happy that you have better results, and I'll be very happy too. So encourage the positive things instead of telling him uh, what, he's, what he's doing is wrong. Okay, and sincerely love and do good to people, sincerely, that we truly love people. So I hope you all would think about this. How can I sincerely love people? 
Luke 6, 35, but love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the unthankful and evil. So love your enemies. If, you, if we love the enemies, we'll also love our family members and our friends and our church members. Uh, and do good and lend to people hoping for nothing in return. Even when they cannot return it, then we still lend to them. And your reward will be great. So when we love people, our reward will be great. <clears throat> so Jesus is encouraging us. When we do good to people, then He'll reward us greatly. And we'll be sons of the Most High and he's, because He's kind to the unthankful and evil. Even when people are, are unthankful and evil, God still uh, is kind to them. And submit and love one another. So it's not just telling the wife to submit to us. In Ephesians 5.21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So submit to one another, that we should both submit to one another. And wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. And then husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherish, cherishes it, it, just as the Lord does the church. So we... we we cherish our body, we nourish our body, so we'll nourish our family members, our spouse, our children, our church members, we'll be nice to them, we build them up, because when we build them up, we are actually building up our own body, we are building up ourselves, then God is pleased with us, God will bless us, so when we do good to people, we are actually doing good to ourselves, but when people criticize the wife, they are creating pain in the family, then they will be suffering. So when the hu husband doesn't treat the wife well, then he's, he's mistreating himself also. He will be suffering. And one thing, one thing very important for us to understand is relationship is more important than matters or money. That is important to keep the relationship. That will treasure relationship. We we'll say it's important to keep a good relationship, then we can uh, have positive influence on, on the other person, then we have better relationship and we can enjoy each other. And things and matters and how things are done are less important. Now, of course, it's important too to do things well, but uh, it's more important uh, that the relationship is kept well. So even when the other person is not doing so well, then we can, uh, we, we don't want to yell at the person and hurt the other person. You know, when we do discipline in the family, we don't want to make the other person feel very bad and hurts. It's for education. So instead of just yelling and, and beating the child, we can say, well, you're precious. Your life will go higher and higher. And I noticed that the other times you were doing something, uh, you, you study well and then you, uh, you study hard and also you help in the family, that was so nice. And I'll be very happy if you continue to do that, and that will be very helpful to us. So, so that's a way to, to uh, teach the children without offending the children, without making him feel bad. So I hope we understand this. Now for me, I never want to make my wife feel bad even one time. She really likes me, she really loves me. I don't want her to have any negative memory of me. Because if she has negative memory of me, she would gradually lose the, the love for me and uh, or the how, how much she likes me. That, that it would become hard for her to love me. But now it's very easy for her to love me. She enjoys loving me. Because we are both nice to one another. So I hope that you two will be nice to one another. And uh, keep the relationship and say to your wife and say, I have heard the teaching of Pastor Yip. I really want to build up the relationship. And then we can enjoy each other, we can enjoy marriage, and then we can enjoy God, and we can enjoy um, the ministry together. Okay, now, languages of love. Now, this languages of love doesn't mean just w uh, what we say, 
but our action also okay the five languages of love that we want to do to other people now this is from uh, from people studying and find out how people love one another okay so first words of affirmation like saying I love you you're precious and important to me and what you did to me is wonderful I'm happy to have you so those are words of affirmation uh, uh, words of love uh, that encourage other people so that's one thing what we do that that's language of love and then quality time concentrate in relationship no cell phone or TV that concentrate uh, to one another and take a walk together uh, chat together care for each other massage each other so that's quality time and giving gifts with the heart to bless the spouse does not have to be expensive the gift doesn't have to be expensive it can be a small gift but just to show that I care about you and then I bought this gift for you and then for acts of service helping in big uh, small and big things you know doing the bed putting the cloth, clothes in place uh, massaging the other person uh, uh, caring for the other person helping the other person in his work and I hope that husbands will also do house chores now many husbands you know because they follow the tradition when they work outside when they go home it's only the wife that would do all the chores in the family and the husband would just sit there and do nothing I hope that the husbands will also do things you know it's not a loss to serve the family it's a gain when we serve the family the family will have more love and then physical touch of course it's according to the relationship when we touch each other hug or kiss uh, th that depends on the relationship you know for church members maybe we shake hand or, or pat on the shoulder so uh, things like that uh, that would uh, that conveys love now there is an exercise that we can do bring two sheets of paper uh, actually four sheets of paper small small sheets very small and then you and your spouse each has two sheets one sheet is to write down what you like most when the other person does to you what do you like most that would show love to you so you write down one two three four five which one is your first choice that you really see that as uh, act of love and then and then the second sheet you guess whether for your spouse what she likes most to as an expression of love and then your spouse will also write on one sheet what she likes most as an expression of love and then the other sheet, she would guess you what kind of action that she think that you would like most as an action of love. Now, I found that most women like the quality time, the time together. Number one, and then words of affirmation. That for most women, so women like the concentrated time together and the words of affirmation positive words words of love and for men many men like physical touch uh, and then uh, for the other one it's it depends on each person maybe words of affirmation or maybe acts of service so please remember this and then find out what makes your wife most happy and do the things that makes her happy when she's happy you'll be happy uh, if she doesn't change right away be patient be patient one of the fruit of uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit is patience you know we, d we cannot change people overnight it takes time so I hope we all go home and change okay and this concept of the love bank